Hi, I'm Brandon Graisley. I teach high school computer science, and let's talk about documentation in the Java programming language. And there are basically two types. We have external and internal forms of documentation. The external ones include things like a user manual for the end user who wants to use your software. We have an API specification. That's to explain how in, uh, individual parts of a program work so that other programmers inside of your project can uh, understand how everything fits together and uh, and what the parameters are for different uh, methods or classes and so on. And then we have software design notes, maybe things like a diagram that explains how everything fits together uh, and how your piece fits into the larger picture. Uh, the internal types of documentation in Java, we basically have three types. We have single line comments, short things that we can use to explain uh, maybe a line that is really uh, complicated and, and is difficult to understand. We write a little comment to explain uh, those difficult details. We have multi-line comments to explain maybe how a block of code works and anything that takes more than a few characters to explain. We use multi-line comments for and they're slightly different. And then there's Javadoc. Javadoc is a system for documentation where we, we document, uh, let's say something like a, a method, uh, like a function, and we explain how it works and what the parameters are and what it returns. Uh, and all of that uh, can be turned into a series of web pages that provides our API specification for your class. And so I'll show you how each of these three different types of internal documentation work. So here we have a program. I'll explain what it does in just a second, but notice that it begins with a multi-line comment. It starts with a slash star and ends with a star slash. And when those two characters appear, that begins a multi-line comment. And until star slash appears, uh, everything in between is a comment. Uh, and Java helpfully puts these little uh, asterisks down the way here to help you see that. Uh, all of this happens, in this case, just above a, uh, the package name. A um, little further down, here we have some Java doc. I'm going to come back to how this works in just a minute. Uh, and then let me say, let's say I wanted to put a little comment here to explain what these variables are. Um, and in this case, they are... Uh, these make up... the coordinates of a point. Okay, and so there's like a one line comment. See, slash slash, everything from here to the right is all comment. You can't write any code over to the right of slash slash. It'll be ignored uh, by the uh, compiler. Uh, and so if I, if I want a multi-line comment, I start with slash star. If I want with a single line, I want a single line comment, I start with slash slash. And then if I want Java doc, I start with slash star star. And I'll show you how it works here. I've got a method down below called distance. And you, you're maybe not, excuse me, 100% sure what it does. So let me explain. Slash star star. You can see everything grayed out. When I press enter, Java will fill in for me, or the NetBeans rather, will fill in for me all of the stuff that I need to have good Java doc documentation for this method, this method distance. The param uh, tags here, there's one for each of the three parameters that I have. In my, in my method. Uh, and there's a, a return tag as well because here this says that this method will return a double value. So before that though, there's a line here just above the parameters to explain uh, in words what this method does. Uh, this calculates the distance from the origin to the point x, y, z. And the parameter is the uh, distance of the point along the x-axis. That's probably over explaining this. Somebody who's using this program would already understand what this is for. But just to be super clear, I'll cut and paste all this along the z-axis. Okay, now the return is the return value that we expect, and we should include here any special details that are, are unusual, like, uh, you know, maybe this can't be a negative number, for example, or it shouldn't be. Um, so here we return uh, the distance from the origin to the point x, y, z. Uh, the value will always be non negative. It could be zero though. Now it's imp you'll notice that I kind of wrote exactly the same thing here in the return value and in the description of the method. Now this is a very simple method and so that's kind of the way it works. Um, however, 
um, in general, it, it's important that you fill in both of these things and not leave a gap in your documentation. Uh, you, you might include here um, in the description of the method or in the parameters here, you might say something like the, the x, y, and z values are allowed to be negative. That would be fine. Okay, so let me go down here. I'll put in a short little comment maybe. I don't know if I need to here. I've got the, what we've got here is uh, take the square root of x times x, which is x squared, plus y times y, plus z times z. That'll take the square root of the uh, sum of the squares of each distance along each axis. So that's what the, the distance is. Now let me go back up here to where we're calling that method. Here it is, here's the distance method. We, find, we call a distance of x, y, z, and that's wrapped up inside of this other format method. So what does that method do? This one looks like it's a little bit more complicated. It uh, returns a string, it takes input as a double, and then there's some code down here that's maybe not 100% clear. So I'm going to write javadoc for it as well. And then you may, without anything extra, actually, you'll probably understand how this works for the most part. So what this method does is it formats a double value so that uh, it has a single uh, digit after the decimal place. And then importantly, I'm just going to keep going here. Uh, if the value after the if the digit rather, if the digit after the decimal place is zero, uh, only a whole or only an integer, I should say, is returned. Maybe I should say only a string representation. of an integer's return. Okay, so we're going to get a string back and it's either going to be like 16.2 or just 16 if it would have been 16.0. So input has to be uh, a double value which is the value to be formatted. And then the return value here, I'm just going to say um, a string representation of, and I'm just going to use the word input because input is the name of this variable here, this parameter variable, a string representation of input um, with up to one decimal place. And you know my description up above here gives all the detail that you would need. So now I have uh, described this method kind of completely. You don't even need to know how it works. You don't need to, for example, understand how this decimal format object works. You just need to know that if you put a double in for input, you're going to get back the appropriate type of string. Uh, and there, I've documented my class. So I've got one more thing here. You'll notice that my main method already has uh, this at param args, the command line arguments. Well, there's args. It's a parameter to this method. Uh, and this, in my case, is unused. I don't refer to the args at all, the arguments to this uh, program. So I just I always put this here just to be clear that um, you can't stick something in there and expect any kind of um, result. Also, my name is here, the author, uh, but it's my username for my Windows machine. So I'm just going to fix that up to be my longer name. And right here, you could put a little something explaining what this thing does. Okay, so I might... Uh, let me just run this application just to show you that it does work. Hey, we got a 12 out of it. If I change something like uh, that, I got 12.1. Great. So that's how it works. And um, so that's good. Now I wanted to show you how the Javadoc is generated. So generate Javadoc right here. It's in the run menu, which I have to look for. I don't find that intuitive. Uh, so when it runs, uh, it's going to open up a web page. So mine's opening in Chrome, and it's got several frames in it. And you'll notice right here is the name of my class, documentation example. Clicking there, I see the constructor, which is there's an empty constructor because I didn't make one. And static void main is the only method listed here. And there's the detail for it. Now, I'm just going to flip back here. The reason for that is that main is a public method. But down here, these little guys, these are private methods. And so by default, private methods are not shown in Javadoc. There's a setting for that, though. You can have those show up, uh, which you might want to for 
uh, internal API specifications. So there, I'm going to make those public, and you watch the difference now. Uh, run, let me save first, and I will run the Java doc again. And it will once again open up the web page for me. I'll go in here, and now I have all three methods listed. And notice in this little summary here, I get that first line explaining what each method does. And when I go down further here, I get the, the sort of full detail, what all the parameters mean, how exactly it works, all of that stuff is down here. Uh, and see, for example, here, formats a double value, so it has a single digit after the decimal place, and then more stuff. That is not included way up here in the summary. Only the first part is included. So that's how you do Javadoc. It's actually really, really important that you do that. And it's frustrating as a programmer when you maybe download a library from somebody else and you find out that they have neglected to fill out the Javadoc and you've got to read through their code instead of reading through a well-formatted web page. So fill in your Javadoc, write your little comments to explain stuff, but don't over-comment. Be careful. This is a little too much, actually. Be careful not to over-comment and have your code be a giant book with a little bit of code in the middle. Okay, so thanks very much, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.